Kyriakos Papaxronis was born in Xanthi, Greece. On September 20, 1960, he grew up working in his family's cafeteria, along with his brother and sister. At the age of 14, Papaxronis had his first sexual encounter with a prostitute. He said that she spoke to him ironically and questioned his manhood. After finishing high school, he moved to Athens and worked in hotels. He was declared a champion in both boxing and karate. By 19, Papaxronis was serving in the Greek army as a second lieutenant in the northern Greece city of Drama. Victims of the Ogre of Drama. 1. September 5, 1981. G.R. Theosharidou. Prostitute in Drama. Greece. Papaxronis went to a brothel and selected a 46-year-old prostitute. The woman seemed to question his sexual competence and made him finish quickly, which led to a fight between them. Angered, he left the brothel, only to return a few hours later with a knife and kill the prostitute. 2. December 20, 1981. M. Postiadou. In drama. Greece. This time Papaxronis stalked his prey while she walked the streets looking for a customer. When she was turned away from him, he stabbed her in the back. Her screams brought witnesses causing Papaxronis to flee. 3. December 30. 1981 to 19-year-old student. The young woman had left the movie theater after watching a porn screening. Papaxronis rushed her, stabbing the woman in the cervix. Her father was nearby, causing Papaxronis to flee the scene quickly. This girl survived her attack. 4. January 15, 1982. E. Papadopoulou. A student in drama. Greece. The nurse was walking to the train station when Papaxronis grabbed her. He pulled her under the air bridge, where he was able to knock her out. Next, he tried to rape her but being unable to, fled the scene leaving the woman alive. E. Papadopoulou was the first surviving victim who gave the police enough information to come up with a sketch of the attacker. 5. August 15, 1982. Anastasia Alexandri Du. A 20-year-old female student in Thessaloniki, Greece. By unfortunate circumstances, Anastasia Alexandridou ran into an acquaintance at the Archaeological Museum of Thessaloniki, Kyriakos Papaxronis. When she left the museum, Papaxronis followed her home, where he asked her to make love. After she said no. He covered her mouth and dragged her to a grove nearby. Papaxronis then pulled out a knife and stabbed her in the cervix. He proceeded to rip her clothes off and then rape her. He removed all of her clothes and personal belongings, taking them with him, eventually throwing them away near the Menemene train station. The only thing he kept was her lighter. As a possible souvenir. Anastasia Alexandridou was left naked and bleeding in the grove. It took her two hours to die from internal hemorrhage and pulmonary asphyxia. 6. September 21. 1982 23-year-old female attacked but managed to escape. 7. October 1. 1982 18-year-old female seriously injured but survived her attack outside her drama home. 8. October 25. 1982 32-year-old prostitute was violently assaulted in drama but eventually survived. 9. December 30. 1982 30-year-old cleaner and mother of four. He stalked her for days before stabbing her in the face and carotid, leaving her to bleed out as he ran away. Hunt and arrest of a relentless attacker. Surviving victims described their attacker as a man wearing a military uniform. This critical piece of information got the military involved.
with a list of suspected soldiers that could have been the attacker. Authorities narrowed in on Kyriakos Papaxronis. When the media reported the latest attack on December 30, it came to the attention of army officers Christos Triandafilidsis and Tarsos Cosmidis. Most of the men were on the base due to a ban on leaving having been put in place. But one man, Kyriakos Papaxronis, had arrived late. When officers Triandafilidsis and Cosmidis questioned Papaxronis, he had no reason to give why he was late. And no one could vouch for his whereabouts that night. The officers also noticed that Papaxronis seemed nervous talking about where he had been. The officers decided to search Papaxronis's apartment on the base. They found his knife collection and a lighter that would prove to have belonged to his victim. Anastasia Alexandridou. The drama authorities arrested Kyriakos Papaxronis. During interrogation, he refused to admit to the attacks. But as he continued to talk, his stories started to break down and not add up. Eventually, after seeing all the mounting evidence against him including witness statements being picked out of a lineup, no alibis for the time of the attacks, and the lighter belonging to one of the victims. Papaxronis confessed to all of the attacks, rapes, and murders. Then he confessed to more. He told the authorities that he was also a bomb builder. Papaxronis said that on March 12, 1982, he had planted two bombs. One at the National Bank of Greece's Xanthi branch, and the other at the post office in Xanthi. The next day he said he placed two bombs in Kavala, at the Alpha Bank branch. On June 16, 1982, he placed a bomb at his army base in Drama. Also, he started a small fire at the Kavala International Airport that had been investigated as arson. The ogre of Drama is brought to trial. The trial took place between June 14-18. 1983. Newspapers and television journalists from far away came to cover the case. Papaxonis was outspoken in court, causing much of the media hype. He threatened reporters that if he were found guilty, he would escape and massacre countless people. His threats caused the police to use over 300 officers in total for the four-day trial. The defendant also rejected most of what his lawyers said in his defense. They argued that Papaxonis was lashing out at these women who tried to diminish his manhood. Papaxronis was adamant that there was nothing wrong with his manhood, courage, or good looks. I have not built so many years this body to be destroyed by psychiatrists. This psychiatrist that he talked about testified that he was mentally and spiritually healthy, but a narcissist and suffered from anxiety, social immaturity, distrust, and individualism. In the end, Papaxronis was found guilty and sentenced to death with 20 years imprisonment for the charges of manslaughter, attempted homicide and illegal possession and repeated use of weapons. In July 1984, he was being charged with seven attempted murders and eight attempted rapes during a second trial. He received 27 years in prison. For the two charges of murder, he was sentenced to death. And for the possession of nine weapons, he was given two years. And lastly, he received 10 years for deprivation of political rights. All of these convictions equates to a total of two death sentences and 59 years in prison. Prison time. Those who had to deal with Papaxronis behind bars described him as brutal, aggressive, angry, and often violent. He committed numerous crimes behind bars including riots and attacking guards for over 10 years after his sentencing. Eventually, he calmed down and did what many serial killers before and after him did. 
find groupies who worshipped and adored him. He received a constant supply of love letters where women promised him their eternal love. After serving only 22 years, Kyriakos Papaxronis was released from prison at the age of 44 on December 8, 2004. He released a written statement. 22 years ago, driving away from age, and especially from my terrible encounters, we all sold our souls to Lucifer, like Faust, and I personally lost, taking an exorbitant legal obedience. I ask the founding state form the public opinion to apologize for, the mean soul, for those abominable burdens of my annoyances and I promise to continue to live, in an obscure and subdued state, and of course, brilliant in every way. Quote exclamation mark. Asta la vista. In due course. The killer's reasoning. Papaxronis would blame his first encounter with a prostitute for why he committed his crimes when he spoke to news reporters after his release. That initial embarrassment he endured at the age of 14 had a detrimental effect on how he felt about all women. Papaxronis claimed. After that first attempt with a woman, he said he tried again with a prostitute, going with friends this time. This woman supposedly made fun of him in front of his friends, which he said caused a blow to his self-esteem. These experiences left him feeling isolated and withdrawn into himself. He fixated on porn. Years later, when he finally tried with a prostitute again, he still couldn't perform. This new failure was said to have brought back all the old memories that caused him to avenge his rage. More info.